Hello and welcome to the first of my Rails Testing for Beginners walkthrough videos. This video is one of the videos that goes through my chapters in my book, Rails Testing for Beginners. And you can find that book at codewithjason.com under the products section. And I'm mentioning this in case you're finding this video on YouTube or somewhere else. Uh, and you want to get the complete package, you can get the complete package by going here and uh, buying the video package. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to be going through right now is a Rails testing Hello World. So what we're going to do is build an application that has just one single set static page that says Hello World. Then we're going to write a single test using RSpec and Capybara to visit that page and just assert that that page contains the text, hello world. So it's about the simplest possible capybara test that I could think of. I'm just gonna go through my own instructions here in the book. First, I'm gonna do rails new hello world dash T. Um, let me remove my old version first. Um, okay, so the, the dash T part of this, if you're not familiar with it, it means skip the tests. So if you don't do that, instantiating this Rails application will give you a bunch of test unit tests. We don't want that because we're going to use RSpec. So we're going to skip the tests and then just install RSpec ourselves. Before I do anything, I'm going to commit this, initial commit. Okay, and then I'm gonna create my database. And we're gonna to have to add a few certain gems to our gem file. And I'll explain what these are when I add them to the gem file here. Okay, so I actually want to keep by bug because I always like to have by bug in my projects. The RSpec Rails gem is kind of a wrapper for the RSpec gem, specifically if you're using Rails. I guess it helps RSpec talk to Rails more effectively or something like that. The Capybara gem includes Capybara. And if you've heard of Capybara but you don't know exactly what it is, Capybara is like a wrapper around the Selenium library. So Selenium is something that exists independently of Ruby or Rails. It's a way of manipulating browsers. Capybara is a way to manipulate Selenium using Ruby. These two gems are a little more like low-level nuts and bolts type things. I can't explain exactly what they do, but basically they help um, RSpec and Capybara communicate with Selenium, is my understanding. It's a detail that, uh, that is probably unimportant for us to concern ourselves with, especially in this Hello World exercise. Okay, so now that I've installed my gems, I'm going to install RSpec which might seem a little bit confusing because didn't we just install the RSpec Rails gem? Well, we have to run this command because it will give us a couple files. It'll generate a couple files and put them into our project. Okay, we're having this cool thing happen where the command just hangs Okay, I fixed the hanging command issue. You can see here that it generated a few files for us. The ones I want to focus on are spec helper and rails helper. Spec helper is really just, um, it's something I never need to really pay attention to or, or work with at all. So I pretty much just ignore it. The other file, rails helper, that's one that I do work with. And I don't usually need to like modify what's there too much, except for um, sometimes I uncomment this line, which we don't need to get into what that's about right now. Um, 
But my point is between these two files, spec helper and rails helper, rails helper is certainly the more significant and the one you can expect to work with more. In fact, you can expect to never work with spec helper at all probably. Okay, so we've installed our spec and I'm gonna do a little commit here now that I've done that. Install our spec. Now we can actually create our page, our Hello World page. So I'm going to generate a controller. Then I'm going to open up the index template for that controller. App views Hello World index. I'm going to change the contents just to say Hello World. So I'm gonna open up a Rails server. Um, I happen to have something running already at port 3000. So I'm gonna do port 3001 instead. Um, and then I'm gonna open this page, hello world slash index. There we are, the page says hello world. We've verified it with our eyeballs by now, but uh, we still need to write a test that verifies it, of course. So here's how we do that. We're gonna open up spec slash hello world spec.rb. All our tests need to have the suffix of underscore spec, so our spec knows that it's a test file. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Spec hello world spec. Okay, what does this do? The part to pay attention to is these two lines here. First, we're gonna visit hello world index path, which of course is hello world slash index. And then we're gonna expect the page to have the content of hello world. And I am going to, um, to run this, r spec spec hello world spec dot rb. Okay, that succeeded, but it's a little bit mysterious what actually happened. We're gonna do a couple things. Um, I'm actually gonna do this in reverse order that it appears in the book. I'm gonna add a line to our railshelper.rb that makes it so it actually pulls up a browser so we can see what's happening. Config. Uh, what is this not config spec rails helper okay and I'm gonna paste this line at the bottom changing the default driver to selenium chrome you can use different I'm not gonna get super deep into this right now but you can use different drivers for capybara some drivers are headless meaning it won't pull up a browser other drivers are not headless and they will pull up a browser this driver, Selenium Chrome, is not headless, and so it will pull up a browser. Unfortunately, the browser is going to kind of flash because the test runs so quickly. So here's what we can do if we actually want to see the test run. We can add a sleep in here. I'll sleep for five seconds after we visit the Hello World index path. then we'll actually be able to see Hello World up on the screen so that we know that what's happening is the same thing as what we think is happening. Now, it's always a good idea not to trust a test that you see pass the first time because the question is, did this test pass because I wrote the test properly and the feature's actually working? Or did the test pass because I made a mistake in my test in such a way that it gave me a false positive? False positives happen more than you would think, so it's always good to check for those. So I'm going to change, I'm going to leave my test the same way it is, and I'm going to change my application code. Let's see, app views hello world index. 
I'm going to change it from hello world to jello world. Now we should see a failure. You can see our page now says jello world. Our test should fail. There it is, expected to find text hello world in jello world. That is what we expected to see. So now I'm going to change it back to what it's supposed to be. And I'm going to take out that sleep because we don't want that in production. That was just so we could examine it for a minute. Having a hard time typing. Okay. There it is. And that test passed. And we could leave the config so it pulls up a browser. We could change it back so it runs headlessly. I'm not going to worry about that part right now. Um, but there we have it, a hello world RSpec Capybara test that just tests a single page. Again, if you found this video online and you want to see the rest of them, you can Google Rails testing for beginners. My book should be the first thing that comes up. You can get the book and the video package by going here. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.